So besides our physical expectation that a virus such as SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus could be transmitted through respiratory droplets, especially aerosol droplets through the airborne route of transmission, there is substantial evidence, both epidemiological evidence and some physical evidence to support this hypothesis. So first, let's go through some of the epidemiological evidence. This is a very small fraction of what is available uh, to date. So the first, uh, one of the first incidents that gave uh, a sense there might be airborne transmission was a religious event that took place at the Chiantong Temple in Ningbo, China, where uh, there were uh, hundreds of people in attendance, but in particular, there were two buses that brought worshipers uh, in one hour uh, bus rides to this location. And on one of the buses was one of the, was what was known to be the first uh, infected person uh, with COVID-19 entering this region after having had contact with others from Wuhan, China, the initial source of the outbreak. And on the bus where the infected person was, uh, 23 out of 68 passengers became infected during that ride. And despite the fact that there was also contact in the larger temper building with many other people, uh, very few there were infected. And on the second bus, where they kept the same seating, there were no infections. So that gave a sense that on public transportation, there could be substantial uh, super spreading going on. So shortly afterwards, uh, there were a number of incidents, including uh, a case in a restaurant in Guangzhou, China, where an infected person was sitting at a table uh, having dinner with a party there. And there was a documented uh, transmission to a far corner of the room to, with a person who had not been within a short distance, such as six feet of the infected person, had not touched anything uh, that could have led to contact transmission. And it was concluded that it could only be explained by airborne transmission. Uh, then, uh, in, uh, there was a, a well-known case of, uh, involving a cruise ship, one of several such cases, of the Diamond Princess cruise ship, where uh, infections, a few infections were detected. And on February 3, uh, 2020, the ship was quarantined in the harbor of Yokohama, Japan. And uh, on that, during that quarantine, out of 3,011 passengers and crew on the ship, there were uh, total at the end of 12 days of 354 uh, infected uh, persons, starting from an initial estimate of, well, several known cases. And by our own analysis, we will, we will be estimating there were perhaps around 20 initial cases. So a dramatic increase in the number of infected persons in 12 days, despite the fact that the passengers were mostly confined to their cabins with very little movement between. And also later analysis showed that there was uh, very little statistical correlation between contact with an infected person even being in the same room and b getting a transmission. In other words, transmission was happening between people in different rooms, even on different floors, uh, presumably through the air handling system. Uh, and among many other events that followed, another famous case was one of the uh, initial uh, sources of spreading in South Korea was the Shincheonji Church, uh, which uh, held services uh, over the period of February 16 to 25. And a significant fraction of thousands of churchgoers were infected that led to the uh, initial uh, outbreak uh, in Korea. Again, coming from contact of a large number of people sharing an indoor space where it's not possible for each of those people to have been touching each other or within three or six feet but rather the only plausible explanation is transmission through the air. Another such example in Korea uh, had to do with a call center where it was hundreds of people working in a building with many floors and there was an infected person in one large room of one of the floors and a significant fraction of the coworkers were infected in that call center and yet relatively small number in uh, another parts of the same floor or on other floors. Again, pointing to airborne transmission after subsequent analysis. And then one of the first cases in the United States uh, famously occurred in the Skagit Valley Corral, uh, which was holding a choir practice in Mount Vernon, Washington, USA. We will be analyzing this case in more detail, but it very dramatically showed the uh, evidence for airborne transmission uh, because in a two and a half hour choir practice, 
one infected person managed to infect 53 out of 61 others, two of whom later died uh, when there was, it could be documented that there was no direct contact, short range contact or touching between all of those people, but rather they simply shared the same indoor space. Also, there was a hint that respiration and the type of respiration was important in that these people were singing, and that led to a dramatic increase in the rate of transmission compared to other airborne events. There are many other examples one could go through. There have also been recently some meta-analyses of large numbers of cases uh, which further point towards indoor airborne transmission of COVID-19. One recent such study looked at 7,300 cases of initial spreading of COVID-19 out of the epicenter of the outbreak in Hubei province, China. So they looked at 320 cities uh, to the first known cases in those cities uh, outside of Hubei province. And they identified all the clusters of two or more transmissions. And of those clusters, uh, there, were se uh, they all, uh, there were 72 of them, and they all occurred indoors. And out of those, 80% were at home in people's apartments, uh, and 34% also included uh, some public transportation. And out of all those clusters of transmission, only one was documented to be occurring outdoors, consistent with a wide range of other evidence. Moreover, uh, there's been a cataloging of super spreading events, such as the ones I've listed here, and that list now numbers uh, well over a thousand. And out of all the super spreading events uh, that have been documented, all of them have occurred indoors and involving large enough numbers of people that airborne transmission is the most plausible explanation. So besides the overwhelming epidemiological evidence for airborne transmission of COVID-19, there is also growing physical evidence. So first of all, other diseases that we've discussed in this course, such as tuberculosis, a bacterial disease, uh, measles, and the original SARS-CoV coronavirus, uh, which are viral diseases, have all been uh, established and believed to be uh, transmitted uh, through respiratory aerosols. SARS-CoV-2 is a very similar coronavirus to SARS-CoV-1, and so it's plausible that its mechanism of transmission would be the same, if not similar. And indeed, there have been, has been recent work uh, demonstrating that infectious aerosol droplets could be isolated from infected patients uh, with COVID-19. And in particular, uh, the most infectious droplets observed were in the aerosol range with radii less than two microns. So the evidence is growing and frankly, becoming overwhelming that the airborne radar transmission is important, if not dominant for COVID-19. So we will continue now by analyzing how to uh, mitigate and model the transmission of a respiratory pathogen indoors.